Hello, Stephanie Anderson here and welcome to the interior formatting web series. Um, this video series is going to be for indie authors and maybe book designers who are looking to expanding their business um, from not just cover design but also offering interior formatting and ebook conversion. Um, this is part one of this video series and what we're going to be doing first is looking at how to use Adobe InDesign to format print books as well as ebooks. I'm going to take you through step by step on how to do this. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me because I feel like if you are going to do some sort of training videos, you need to know what you're talking about. Um, I have been doing layout work in InDesign for a very long time, um, since InDesign 2.0 in the early 2000s, and prior to uh, using InDesign, I used uh, Adobe PageMaker, which used to be Aldis PageMaker, so I've been using some sort of page layout program since the early 90s. Um, I've been a graphic designer for over 25 years. Yes, I'm a little old. Um, and uh, I, I primarily specialize in layout and typography. I am not an illustrator. Um, I can do great things in Photoshop and, and Illustrator, but I'm not a drawer. I'm not an artist. I am, I, I just consider myself a layout and typography artist. Uh, for the past 10 years, um, I have been doing specifically book formatting for, um, Independent authors as well as small and medium publishers. Uh, I've been working with a company out of Atlanta. We're Jira Publishing. We provide services for independent authors as well as small and medium sized publishers. Um, we do book cover design, interior formatting, ebook conversion, consulting, um, marketing materials, you name it, anything related to uh, self-publishing. Uh, we help authors, uh, we help authors with the different services. Um, so I have been doing that for the past 10 years and prior to that I was a freelance graphic designer as well as a marketing manager for a financial consulting company for many years. I uh, have put together training manuals, um, marketing materials, brochures, newsletters, everything you name, er, pretty much everything you can think of uh, related to graphic design. Um, also, I am an independent author. Um, I published my first novel back in 20, this year, earlier this year, 2019, May of 2019, I published um, my first book in a series that I'm working on called the My Life series. It's actually a young adult series. So if you like reading young adult novels, um, they're just your traditional realistic nothing no fantasy here just uh, everyday life of teens um, so be sure to check out my books um, right now I have three out um, my life is Kelsey my life is Noah and my life is Marley and they're all interconnected characters um, but they all serve as standalone novels so you don't have to read book one before you read book two um, so feel free to check them out. They're available on Amazon as an ebook paperback and they're also in Kindle Unlimited. Um, and my pen name is Victor um, Victoria Anders. So look for Victoria Anders. I also have a third book coming out. I'm sorry, a fourth book coming out um, in December of 2019. And throughout this video uh, presentation on how to use InDesign, we are actually formatting that book for print as well as um, ebook. So I'm walking you through the process with a real book that's going to be out there for sale. Okay. All right. So before we get started, we are going to talk about, um, I want to go over a couple of terms. So you'll be familiar with, if, if you've been doing this for a while, you might already be familiar with these terms, but these are some terms I definitely want you to know. Um, the first uh, two terms really uh, are POD and offset, okay? POD stands for print on demand, and it is basically the process that Ingram Spark, KDP, and uh, Nook Press use to print uh, all these great independent author books, they print them on demand. So when an order comes into Amazon, 
If Amazon doesn't already have that book on their shelves, what they'll do is they send it to KDP, KDP prints it and binds it, and then they ship it out one at a time. It is a great technology. It is somewhat limited, um, and but it allows us to offer a, a fairly cheap price point for paperback books. Um, and the great thing is, is it's with it prints one at a time. If you find a mistake in your book, you can upload a new file and the next time that book is printed, um, it's corrected. Now, the traditional way of printing books um, prior to 10, uh, this uh, print on demand has been around for about 10, 15 years as far as in the publishing industry. Um, but prior to that, and, and still to this day, offset presses are used, and you're talking about these big monster printers that, um, you know, traditional books are printed this way. Um, and this is where when you have large quantities, like you may order a 500 books or a 1,000 books, sometimes it's cheaper to go with an offset press if you can afford that initial cost of that large print run. You can get your cost per book down by using an offset press and the quality is actually going to be better because you're going to have choices of paper um, and you can do fancier things such as foil printing, um, CMYK plus a PMS color. So if you are looking at creating a special edition of a book and you can afford to order, you know, several hundred or several thousand copies at once, and you have the storage space for them, offset printing is definitely the way to go. However, what probably the majority of everybody that's going to be watching this video and all the independent authors, you're mainly going to be doing print on demand, whether it's KDP or Ingram Spark or Nook Press. Okay, so pretty much everything we're going to be talking about is going to be for print on demand. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is PDF. You should know what a PDF file is. They've been around for many, many years, and it's basically a universal file that stands for Portable Document Format. Um, it's from Adobe, and um, basically this allows us to share files with the fonts embedded with printers. Um, I can send you a PDF on, that I generated from my PC that you can view on your Mac. And as long as it was uh, created properly, you should be able to view it the, way, the same way I view it with the fonts and everything intact. Um, everything that you need to upload to your printer, whether you use KDP, Ingram Spark, or Nook Press, or any of the other providers out there, chances are they are gonna want it in a PDF file. So in the end, I will show you how to create that PDF file that you will then eventually upload to your printer. All right, so the next two files are ebook files. Um, we have two basic types of ebooks out there there's an EPUB and there's a Mobi. Mobi is a, an Amazon exclusive, it's the Kindle file. Um, so anytime you see Mobi, it's, it's, it's what is read on Kindle devices or Kindle apps. Um, and then an EPUB is traditionally what's read on an iPad or a Nook and what is usually other, um, other co companies who sell eBooks other than Amazon, this is the type of file that they tip traditionally sell as an EPUB. Um, whereas Amazon, they sell only Mobi files. So your, anything that you download in Kindle Unlimited is typically a Mobi file. Um, as far as looks, EPUBs are better. You have more options in EPUBs, but probably 70 to 90% of your sales are gonna be Mobi files unless you are a, an author that, has, that offers your eBooks wide. Um, but chances are you're gonna sell more Mobis than anything. Um, during this video, I'm going to teach you how to create an EPUB file, and then we're going to take that EPUB file and convert it to a Mobi file. So you don't have to create two file types. Um, uh, so your end result after doing this is you're going to have a print PDF, and you're going to have that EPUB that we're going to convert to a Mobi so you can upload to Amazon. Okay? All right. Now, um, this video series, I'm doing this for free. Um, 
I want you to, <laughs> I'm very passionate about InDesign. I love teaching people how to use InDesign. Um, but you may decide that you need extra help and, and that's great, I'm here for you. Um, I am offering a template. Now in this video series, I'm gonna be showing you how to use this template. I am not going to be showing you how to create this template. Um, I have spent many, many years perfecting this template and building it and I use this template for every single book project that I do, that I start with, whether it's a cookbook, whether it's a children's illustrated book, whether it's a complex nonfiction book, I typically start with a template that I have tweaked over and over and over throughout the years. I am offering kind of a, a novel template for you. It's only gonna be 20 bucks. Um, and it's already built. It'll save you a lot of time. You can use it over and over and over for all your books or all your clients' books. And um, it, it, you, it, it's definitely a wise investment. Um, so you can actually, uh, as of as I'm doing this video, it's not available for purchase yet um, unless you contact me directly. So you can actually purchase this template eventually beginning in January of 2020 on a site called bookdesignwizard.com. If you go to that site, look for templates and you should be able to uh, purchase and download the InDesign template. In the meantime, if you would like this template, just email me at stephanie at jarapublishing.com and I will send you a PayPal invoice for it and uh, then I will send you the template. Now, the next thing that you can do if you are looking for extra help, if you purchase this template and you're still kind of stuck and you're not exactly what to do, I am available for one-on-one -on -one training. I charge $50 an hour, so if you ever want to sign up for one-on-one -on -one training with me, I will be more than happy to um, do a screen share training with you and walk you through the process. A lot of times it's a lot easier to um, do it hands-on with someone who's guiding you along the way, okay? Um, next is look for courses on Lynda. There are some great InDesign courses from David Blattner and from Anne-Marie Concepcion and uh, Nigel French. Uh, all these great InDesign uh, videos on how to use InDesign. So I am not going to uh, show you how to use InDesign other than how to do it specifically for the interior formatting. So it's important that you have some base knowledge of InDesign, um, although it's not 100% um, necessary depending on how you grasp, how, how you grasp onto the concepts. Um, if you do not have InDesign, InDesign is part of Adobe's Creative Cloud, so you can actually purchase InDesign for a month. So if you decide that it's not an option, it's not like you have to pay um, hundreds of dollars for the software like you would if, if for Vellum. Um, you can try it out and decide whether this is something that you definitely want to use for your books. Um, but honestly, it is the best program. It is what the traditional publishers use in book design, and um, you are going to have the best quality results with InDesign, okay? All right, so what's coming up? Uh, this is probably going to be about four different little mini videos specific for InDesign, so it is quite lengthy. So yes, you're gonna get tired of hearing my voice, but hopefully it will be worthwhile and you will find it very, very beneficial. Um, but we're going to break it down into four parts to make it more manageable. The first part is we're going to clean up a, a manuscript. Um, this is the most important step uh, before we actually get to InDesign because you want to start with a nice clean file and yes you can do some of the cleanup you want in InDesign there's actually a great script in InDesign however I never use it I'm kind of a control freak and I like to know what I'm doing than rely on a script um, but I will show you that script because it is a, a useful script that is a uh, time saving. All right, so once we clean up the manuscript, we are going to import that manuscript in InDesign and then do a basic setup of the document, okay? Um, the next part is we're gonna design it. We're gonna make it look pretty. Um, and then last, once we make it look pretty, we are going to turn it into an ebook, okay? All right, so now let's get started. We are going to exit out of this. 
And um, the first step is cleaning up your document. Okay, so I uh, am working on a book called Unwrap My Heart. It is a, a Christmas novel that um, I have read, I have uh, done with a co-writer, and we are at that stage that we are getting um, an ARC ready. So an ARC is an advanced reader copy. So I need to prepare um, eBooks for this, but as I'm preparing the eBooks, I'm also going to go ahead and get it ready for print. Um, this isn't the final edited uh, document. Our editor is about halfway through this one. Um, so for purposes of the ARC, um, you know, sometimes a lot of times ARCs are not the final document. So because of time, we are releasing this without the final uh, final edited document as the ARC. All right, so it is currently, because I wrote this with someone else, we kept it in Google Docs. Um, so what we need to do is get this in a format to um, be able to import into InDesign. And InDesign, you can pretty much import any file. Um, you can import a DOC, uh, a DOCX, an RTF, a text file, whatever. I prefer to import a DOCX. Um, and in some cases, if a document is quite complex, I will save that DOCX just down into a regular DOC file, um, which is an older Word document um, file type, and then I'll import it in. So if you have a complex document that gives you fits, in InDesign, sometimes just saving it as a DOC or an RTF file and then importing it into InDesign can get rid of a lot of issues. Um, they, they don't, it, Word to InDesign doesn't always necessarily play particularly nice, but in most cases it does. If you do have errors, that's my number one advice is to save it as a DOC or an RTF before importing it in. All right, so the document currently is in Google Docs. So what we're going to do in Google Docs is we're just going to download it as a DOCX. And then I am going to save it as um, what one of the most important steps you can do, whether you are a uh, designer or something else. Um, uh, author is to make sure you save your files in a meaningful fashion so you can find them. So for every book that I do, um, I have a folder for that book and inside that folder I typically have a subfolder set up for the interior, for the cover, and for the ebook and then I save the file accordingly to whatever folder it needs to go in and so this one is going in unwrap my heart interior and I'm going to put it in a folder called originals and I'm actually going to overwrite what I already have there and then we're going to open this up into in word okay um, we're going to close this out because this is an older version and then we are going to open I'm going to cheat a little bit So this is the, um, the file, and it probably has comments and some track changes in it. So what I'm going to do, it, it, you want to get rid of all of those before you import it in. So I'm just going to go um, accept all changes and stop tracking. And then I'm also going to delete all the comments in the document. Um, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of find and replace to get rid of certain things that are going to cause issues in the document. Um, and these are just some things that can cause issues with full justification, um, with running a couple of grep searches that I'm going to tell you uh, to run to make sure your document, to make sure every paragraph ends with some sort of punctuation, to make sure all quotes, all quotation marks are opened and then closed. Um, these are just little uh, grep searches that I, I do to every document to ensure that those things are complete, just as a final check to make sure everything is done properly. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a series of these uh, things, and this is what I do to every document. Anytime I get a document from a client, I run these and, and clean up their document. So first, um, in Word, 
uh, we are going to do the, the find and replace menu, which is actually control H in Word. And the first thing we're going to look for is we're going to find two spaces. So you just hit the space bar twice and we're going to replace with one space. Okay. And what this is going to do is going to find all those instances where there are two spaces and replace it with one. Uh, we don't want two spaces after a period. It is um, something that us older people learned how to do on a typewriter and some people still do it today. And even if you didn't learn how to uh, type on a typewriter, sometimes you just have two spaces after a period for some reason. So we need to get rid of those because what those do, what those are going to create is extra white space that's not needed when our document is set to full justification. So we are going to get rid of those and it's simple to do just by typing two spaces and find what and one space and replace with. We're going to do a replace all. Well this document there was only one. Now the key with this uh, running the search is you want to run it over and over until it zeroes out. And in some cases, you may have to run it 10 times before it zeroes out. So just keep on running it until you have zero here. So we're going to run it again since we still had, since we had one in there. We're going to run it again and now we have zero. So we know we have no instances of two spaces um, in our document. Okay. Now the next thing is we're going to delete that and we're going to delete this space here and we are going to look for something else. This time we're going to look for a space, so hit the space bar, followed by a paragraph mark. Okay, so this particular thing is where we have a period, then a space, then a paragraph mark. Now, I, you don't have to get rid of these, they're really not going to cause any issues, but I get rid of these because I like to run certain grep searches in my InDesign document that will not work properly um, if I have a space after a period and before a paragraph mark. So I'm going to get rid of that space um, by just replacing a paragraph mark, the space paragraph mark with a paragraph mark. Okay. And we're going to do a replace all. I actually had 325 instances of that. You do not need to zero this one out because um, if we do it again, it's going to be zero. Um, all right, then the next one is I want to find any instances where there's a paragraph mark followed by a space. Okay, and what this is, is this is any uh, new paragraphs that may have a space before the first character. So we don't want those because it's going to cause uh, some misalignment with the indentations. So we're going to replace all of those, had 14 replacements, and then again, this is one that you do not have to run um, to zero out. Then the last, uh, three more things actually, we are going to look for two paragraph marks, and replace it with one paragraph mark. This gets rid of any of those instances if you used like the enter key, if you hit the enter key to go to the next page um, instead of page breaks. So this is going to remove all of those instances where you have two paragraph marks in a row that you do not need. See, we want to get rid of these. We want, you know, just no, no blank lines in there when we import it into InDesign. So we're going to replace all these and you can actually zero these out, place them all, zero them out. Um, the key is if, if this is your document, uh, make sure you didn't have any blank spaces to signify your scene breaks. Um, always use asterisks as your scene breaks initially. And um, if you are a designer, ask your clients to uh, denote a scene breaks as asterisks. Um, and then uh, during the design process, you can decide whether you just want it to be a space or whether you want it to be some sort of graphic. Um, it's just important that those are not spaced out in the document because running this will get rid of it. All right, I don't think I'm gonna get a zero out here, so I'm not gonna worry about zeroing it out. Um, all right, the next thing we want to get rid of is any tabs. So to find a tab in the find and replace is actually caret T that's going to find a tab. 
And I'm not going to replace all. I'm just going to look to see if I have any tabs in the document, and I don't. Um, if you are a book designer and you're doing uh, this type of work for a client, they may have used tabs instead of the first line indent. Um, you definitely want to get rid of all the tabs in the document. And then sometimes some people just have a tab after a paragraph and they, those can cause issues in formatting. So we just want to make sure that those are all out. Um, another thing that can cause issues are hard line breaks. This is where you hit shift enter um, to break a line instead of the enter key. So I'm going to come down here and show you what that's like. So if I hit shift enter here, that didn't create a new paragraph. That just forced the next line down. Okay, but this is not a new paragraph. This is still one paragraph. So that hard line break can cause issues in our formatted document. So we want to get rid of them. I'm going to leave that one there because I don't think there's any other hard line breaks in there. So to find um, hard line breaks, you're, you're going to type in the caret L. Now, if you're not quite sure what the code is for something, if you come down here and um, click on more options, you can often find what you're looking for. So if you are looking for a tab, you can go to tab character. If you're looking for a manual line break, you can go here. So I already knew that manual line break was the caret L, um, but th th that's any of those special things you can you can come in here and search for them. All right, so we're just going to do a find next. Well, we knew that one because we just created it. So we're going to delete that one out. We're going to find next. And I actually had one here. Um, I'm just going to delete it out. And I don't think there are any more. OK, so cleaning up the document. Those things are important to do. Double spaces, um, space paragraph mark, paragraph mark space, um, tabs, and then manual line breaks. OK, definitely want to get rid of those before you import into InDesign. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to save this, save as, um, because I like to make sure I have my original document. Um, I always like to save these documents after I've cleaned them up as clean than the name of the file. Um, this just helps me know that when when it when I have clean in the file name, I know that I've gone through the step of cleaning it up in Word. So I'm going to save that. It's going to ask to replace existing file, and I'm going to say yes. All right. So now that's it. That we've cleaned up the document. So that is the end of this first tutorial. Um, stay tuned for the next one. We are going to be moving forward, and we are going to take this Word document and we are going to place it into our InDesign template. So look for the next video. Thanks.